Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. Let me ask you something. What's a guitar? Stupid question, right? Of course you know what a guitar is. You can probably even picture one in your head. It looks like this, or at least it would if it was drawn by a four-year-old, but what makes it a guitar? What are the specific properties that make it different from, say, a violin? Well, the most common system for answering that question traces its roots to a Dutch guy named Victor Charles Mahian. Mahian was the first curator of the Musical Instruments Museum at the Brussels Royal Music Conservatory, so he had access to a lot of instruments and he wanted to organize them. Problem was, there was no better better way to sort them than gut feeling, and that wasn't nearly good enough. So faced with a lack of a sufficiently rigorous system, Mahian did what any good academic would do and just made his own. He started by breaking them up into four broad categories based on how exactly they produced sound. The first group he called autophones. These make sound through the vibrations of a hard, rigid body like a wood block or a gong. I'll let that ring for a bit. Okay, stop. The next group are the membranophones, which have a flexible skin or membrane, including most hand drums, as well as everyone's favorite dollar store instrument, the kazoo. The third group were called aerophones, and they made sound directly through a vibrating column of air. This includes most blown instruments like saxophones and bagpipes, as well as a few others like the pipe organ. And finally, there's the chordophones, which have vibrating strings like the dulcimer or the aforementioned guitar. But four categories still doesn't tell us much, so Mahian's system included a bunch of subcategories to help distinguish them further. For instance, a guitar's full classification looks something like this. The four marks it as a chordophone. This B means it's plucked, not, say, bowed like a violin. The A means it's played with a pick, and these two Bs tell you that it's got a neck. This kind of rigorous study of instruments is called organology, and Mahian's system worked great for a while, but it was still pretty vague, and since it was designed for his specific collection, it couldn't necessarily describe instruments at the Brussels Conservatory he didn't own. Then along came Eric von Hornbostel and Kurt Sachs, who set about improving on Mahian's system. The first thing they did was rename autophones idiophones, and if that's not revolutionary enough for you, they also completely reworked the subcategories, greatly expanding them to cover pretty much any instrument a musicologist in the early 1900s could imagine, which it turns out wasn't enough, since Sachs had to return in 1940 to add a whole new category called electrophones that produce sound through electric currents. This includes things like theremins, <laughs> and singing Tesla coils, as well as more normal things like synthesizers. But come on, y'all. Singing Tesla coils. Anyway, back to the subcategories. This is what our good friend the guitar looks like in this system, and each one of these digits tells us something new about the instrument. This three marks it as a chordophone. The two tells us that it has a built-in resonator, an empty cavity in which sound waves can bounce around and amplify, and this one identifies it as a member of the lute family, which means that the strings run parallel to the body of the instrument. The rest of it tells us what kind of lute it is. The three says it's a handle lute, which means all the strings are attached to a single handle. This two says it's a necked lute, which means the handle is attached to the outside of the resonator like a neck, and this two tells us it's a box lute, which means the top and bottom are both flat, like a box. Put all that together and you've got a pretty specific description of a guitar. It still includes some other instruments, like the banjo or the guitarron, but that just emphasizes how closely related those instruments are. But that's just the European system. It's the most common one today partly because it's so comprehensive, but also partly because Europe has a bit of a history of aggressively exporting its culture, and looking at how other people approach this problem can shed some fascinating light on how they interact with music. The oldest known system comes from China, and it dates back to around the 23rd century BCE. That's over 4,000 years ago, and their approach was based on what materials the instrument was made of. To start, they had four four types, stone, skin, silk, and bamboo. Gradually, they began to add more until they reached a system called Pa Yin, literally translated as eight sound, which, as you might guess, had eight materials. Metal, stone, silk, bamboo, gourds, clay, skin, and wood. The Pa Yin also held spiritual significance, with each of the materials being related to one of the eight winds and eight seasons of ancient Chinese culture. The Capella people of Nigeria, on the other hand, focus on how an instrument is played, dividing into two main groups, instruments that are struck and instruments that are blown. The struck category is then broken up into five subtypes, hollow containers, rattles, and then instruments with strings, with membranes, and with lamellas, which are thin, rigid plates that are fixed at one end. But perhaps the most interesting system I've 
seen was the one invented on the island of Java. Javanese art music is dominated by gamelan orchestras, and gamelan orchestras are almost entirely percussion, so the best way to divide them up is by how exactly you hit them. They have a category for blown instruments and one for bowed ones, then pulled, plucked, shaken, hand beaten, and two different categories for hammered instruments based on the shape of the hammer, which I think is incredible. It gives you so much insight into their music and culture just by looking at how they decided to divide up their instruments. That's amazing. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to help make these videos possible, please consider supporting 12 Tone on Patreon. You can also join our mailing list for scans of all our episodes. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and keep on rocking.